You know, we outline in um, Cowards, which, by the way, we want to thank you for making the um, uh, number one selling book in America um, for nonfiction. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, we just we read the book scan uh, thing just a little while ago. It's in between, what is it, Shades of Grey? Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah. Fifty Shades of Grey, um, all three, and, and then the trilogy, the set, and then Cowards, and then Hunger Games 1, Hunger Games 2, and Hunger Games 3. That's the, that's the top eight or seven, seven or eight of uh, the top ten list. That's amazing. Thank you for that. But we went... Um, we went in uh, Cowards. There's one chapter that is just about the border. The border is really disturbing for a couple of reasons. One, the more we cover the border, the more sources we get and the better sources we get. And the more information that we get that we're stunned by. And the reason why this is happening is because Nobody's going to risk their life thinking, well, they, they won't, A, they'll rat me out, or B, they'll, they won't ever tell this story. They won't actually tell it. They'll be too afraid. And so then what will I, what, what will have I done? I just put myself in jeopardy for no reason. We put that documentary out, and now we've published Cowards, and the sources on the border have gone through the roof because... People know, wow, they really will stand. If we don't fix our border, we will turn into Mexico. If we don't address what's happening, the corruption that is happening in Washington, we will turn into Mexico. Now, there will be some who will say, well, Glenn Beck hates Mexico. Well, not as much as Glee. But, That's not saying much, though. For I mean, your hatred for Glee knows no bounds. Oh no, no. Am no. I right? I mean, oh, yeah. I I yeah. live to put it out of business. I want, I want mm-hmm. the I want the actors yeah. executed, which wow. is I've never gone. You've never I've gone quite never that far. Never gone quite that far. No, I think that's crazy. Even for you, should be executed. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Shockingly, and, they'll find their way to that sentence. Oh yeah, they will. Yeah. Oh yeah. And they the will. weird thing is, yeah, you only will. found this show yesterday. Yeah, I know. I mean, but it's just so, passion. Yeah. In that, yeah. in that blindness of seeing half an episode. Yeah, you mm-hmm. never heard of it before last week. I mean, <laughs> sure, you had talked about it for years. They're but still printing the stories today. <laughs> they're still, they're coming still out. coming out. These stories mm-hmm. on Glee still coming out. We have corrected their mm-hmm. stories. I don't know how many times. The truth is there. Then no, nobody cares. Yeah, nobody cares. And obviously, Glenn's opinion on Glee is completely unimportant to the world. But what a great example of how bad the media is! I've never seen anything like it. These people continue to repeat repeat these lies and and mis- mm-hmm. misinformation about this speech. And you, you know what? Over Not and over again. Uh, some of them are doing it for agenda. Most of them are doing because they're just sloppy. They're just sloppy. They're lazy, yeah. sloppy, lazy, um, um, mm-hmm. cowards that are just too lazy to actually do their job they're just so fat and sassy and so convinced that they've never been challenged that's the deal nobody ever challenges these people when you're unchallenged you become worthless you just you just build houses of straw because there's no challenge i mean you you think they're really worried about weatherproofing in hawaii no no not really worried about weatherproofing in hawaii you think they're really? You think the fiberglass industry would be really booming, uh, you know, for fiberglass installation, uh, I mean, insulation, if if the only information they had was Hawaii? No, I don't think we would have come up with fiberglass insulation. Do you? <laughs> you wouldn't need it if you're unchallenged. You you just become fat and lazy, and that's that's most of the people in the media, fat and lazy. Anyway, if we don't fix the corruption. As we put in in cowards and show you how it's in now 250 of our cities, the drug cartels, the gangs, the influence from the Muslim Brotherhood and Hezbollah from south of our border now with direct links to 250 of our U.S. cities. And that can only happen if you have a corrupt government, if you have a government that will turn a blind eye. That's happening. And if you think it's bad now, give it another five years. It was bad when they were putting Ramos and Campion in, uh, in jail. Give it another five years. 
you'll have so much money and so much corruption that I mean, it's going to take uh, you know, it's going to take the untouchables. And even then, I don't know if you win. Look at Mexico. Once you have it rooted in your system, it's bad. The best thing we can do is not have an oppressive federal government that has all control. Because if you start having a few at the top go bad, they can change everything. And they already are. Got to tell the truth. Got to stand strong. Got to know what the truth really is. And um, and then um, correct it one by one, person at a time. Even when you you go out on a limb and you try to t- do something and it fails? Like, what are, are you, you saying that? What are you talking about? Like, you have to still tell the truth then? Like, what are you talking about? Well, for example, I, I launched a, a program this week to recall Fifty Shades of Grey uh, from, uh, you know, the, the top of the list. And, uh, you know, you, we, you saw, failed. we saw what happened there. Mm, you failed miserably. You know, I mean, the book was still number one on the nonfiction list, which is how you judge these things. But still, it was, it was yeah, not. Yeah, but that was not really important to us. We didn't really well, care well, here's, about that. Here's what I'd like to say about it. Mm-hmm. There's no embarrassment in the loss. No. There's no question about that. This is a great day for the publishing industry because the turnout was terrific. I think Americans have to celebrate that. You know, I think hey, honestly, just you're starting to sound a little like you're in Wisconsin. I, I, you know, I think honestly there aren't going to be any repercussions from this. No. I mean, it was a defeat for the readers. Mm-hmm. Readers got hurt. The everyday reader got hurt. But That's it's given this a show, good point. it's given this show an opportunity to do the dry run that we need for our massive, significant, dynamic book that's coming out later this year. I didn't uh, know there was. And honestly, what did they win? What did Fifty Shades of Grey win? They, they get the right to continue to sell books? Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you this. You know who the really big winner in this book scan list was? Who? Glenn Beck. Mm-hmm. That's, that's who right. it was. But wait, I, I, I... Wait, hold on. What's the difference between the numbers five yeah. and one? Wait, hold on. Sarah. Four. Sarah's saying she wants to play something here. Go ahead, sir. There is uh, there's no embarrassment in the loss. There's no question about that. This is a great night for democracy because the turnout was terrific, and I think Americans have to celebrate that. I, you know, I mean, I think, honestly, I, there aren't going to be any repercussions. Oh, okay. Well, it was a defeat for the, the people who got hurt. We're the working people on the oh. ground in that state. Regardless, it's given the Obama for America operation an opportunity to do the dry run yeah. that we need of our yeah. massive, significant, dynamic grassroots massive. presidential campaign. Mm-hmm. He did. What did he win? He got the right to serve the rest of his term. The really big winner in the Wisconsin recall election uh-huh. is President Obama. Yeah. Yes. Okay, see? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay, good. I uh, you made it. <laughs> Thank I'd you. I'd love to hear more of the O'Donnell thing. How did Obama become the big winner there and the big loss? The really big winner there is President Obama. <laughs> and the guy who actually lost the race, he's the winner. <laughs> he doesn't have to serve as governor. He's, got, he's home with his feet up right now. Oh, okay.